We've created a world where everybody is very wealthy, but nobody has time to sleep, everybody extremely exhausted. And so in the end, what you should do is try to get yourself a job that pays you adequately. I'm not advocating being poor. It's no fun to be poor, but make sure your job gives you enough time off to enjoy your life. What's the point of having money if you don't have time to enjoy the money? My brother once said to me, nobody ever laid on their deathbed, nobody ever laid dying and said, gosh, I wish I'd spent more time working at the office with the boss, wish I'd spent more time doing the things I love with the people I love. What's the best thing about teaching, by the way? What's the three best things about teaching? June, July, and August. I have had a hundred consecutive days off over the summer every year of my life. People say, oh, did you have a good Thanksgiving vacation? Four days is a vacation. I get a hundred days off every year. It takes me several weeks to even de-stress enough that I can start to enjoy my time off and get yourself a job that you like. If you can get yourself a job that you like, they say, you'll never work a day in your life. One of my former students, young United States Marine, came up to me after this and said to me, my father taught me if when you get home from work, you say, damn, I can't believe they paid me to do that, then you got the right job. Whenever I got home from work, I thought to myself, damn, I can't believe how much they paid me to do that. Get a job that you like, you'll never work a day in your life. And so to teach you how to curse, of course an essential skill in our stressed out world, where it seems to me virtually everything is done backwards. If people in the modern world want to curse you, somebody cuts you off on the freeway, you roll down your window, what do you yell at them? Fuck you. That's ridiculous. Fucking is the most intense physical pleasure. That's not something you say to people who've pissed you off. That's something you say to people you love, people you think are irresistibly attractive. That's part of the definition of irresistible. Fuck you with me. Let's go right now. And the way I like to do this, when I taught at the Catholic University, the University of San Diego, true story by the way, some years ago I had a very attractive couple, young man, young woman, excellent students, outstanding student leaders. Both of them came to my office independently and told me they had been going out with each other for four years and never had sex with each other, holding out in the name of Christ. That's what I got at that Catholic school. Four years, never had sex, holding out in the name of Christ. When they finally get married and they're going off on their honeymoon as you're throwing the rice, that's what you should be waving and yelling, fuck you guys, finally you can enjoy fucking each other. Your parents can't be mad at you for fucking. God can't be mad at you for fucking. Go fuck each other silly on your honeymoon. You waited four years, man. You deserve it. Fuck you. That's something you say to people you really love, to people you think are irresistible. If I want to really curse somebody, then I utter the worst four-letter word in the language that I know of. Work you. Work you hard. Work you under stress, without a break, without time to sleep. Work you. That sounds like a curse to me. If my wife says to me, Steve, we're going to spend all weekend fucking, that sounds great. If she says, Steve, you're going to spend all weekend working, then I want a divorce. And I'm not just making this up as I go, although of course I am to some extent. This has its basis in the Bible, as so much of my material does, as we'll be seeing. Uh, in this case, the Old Testament, the opening scene, the Garden of Eden. What's the curse put on man for Adam's fall in the garden? You're going to have to work, and work is not going to be pleasant by the sweat of your brow. Ye shall labor. You're going to sweat. It's not going to be fun. And so that's what God said to us. That was the curse. Work you. You sinned. Get out of paradise. I'm not taking care of you anymore. Work you. Work you hard. You're going to sweat. And it should be obvious by that criteria. God has not cursed me. God has blessed me. I do not labor by the sweat of my brow. My work has been one of the most enjoyable things I have ever done in life. And the curse put on women for Eve's fall in the garden, the pain of childbirth, 
and the associated discomfort for some women occasionally of their monthly period. And I know when I've said that in the past, some women occasionally of their monthly period, I've had women look at me like, uh, the, does, uh, some women occasionally, does this guy know what periods are like? Does he have any experience of, with women? Has he ever had a girlfriend? My first wife really confused me. She got periods about every three months. They seemed to last for 10 minutes. It was no big deal. Then we divorced. I got other girlfriends and I learned. And nowadays women get both curses. They get to work hard under stress and have their periods. Get your period during your final, take your most stressful final during the most uncomfortable day of your period, and what do they call that? Women's liberation. Get both curses, you're liberated. Everything seems backward. <laughs>